and welcome to this week's edition of the Midweek Mentor. Uh, my name is Tiffany, if you don't know me, and uh, my husband Elliot and I pastor Lifeline Church, and I'm so grateful to be bringing the Midweek Mentor to you today. We're actually at Lifeline Church, we're in a season of prayer and fasting, a season of prayer and fasting. It means 21 days. For the next 21 days, uh, we're committed to being intentional in prayer and supplementing our prayers with fasting. Pastor Elliot brought the Midweek Mentor last week and it was about fasting, so you can go back and find that on social media. Uh, and so this week we've had quite a few questions um, about how to pray, and so I thought I would address today how to pray. Um, or what is prayer, kind of kind of a general all around, let's talk about prayer, shall we? <laughs> um, so prayer, what is prayer is the first question. And prayer essentially broken down, a lot of times people say prayer is just talking to God. So it's kind of just like talking to someone, you know, the, the only thing is, is that God isn't someone that we know. He's not someone tangible who we can look at, who we can look at face to face or we can sit down next to. And so, yeah, we can say, well, it's just talking to God. But what, what does that actually look like? What is prayer? And so another way we can say that is prayer um, is really developing a relationship with God. Um, and so it's, prayer is less about talking to God and more about talking with God. And so prayer is the intentional development of a relationship with the God you cannot see physically. I believe him to be the creator. He's the creator of the world. He's also my father in heaven. And these are things I believe about him because of the things that I read in his word. And so, um, what you believe about God determines how you relate with Him or how you will connect with Him. Yeah, what you believe about Him determines how you will talk to God. Um, and so I believe that He is Creator. I believe that He is Father. And so when I interact with God, I'm, I, I understand that I'm developing, working on developing a relationship with my Father in Heaven and also the Creator of the universe. And so um, knowing who you're talking to uh, will help frame how, how or what, uh, how you do it and, and, and why. Um, and then the other thing to consider or remember is that prayer really is a supernatural activity. So a natural activity is me talking you know, to someone face to face, being in relationship with them. Supernatural is now I'm communicating with someone who is more than natural. He is supernatural. And so I'm not just talking to somebody, to somebody face to face, but I'm interacting with supernatural God. And so um, prayer is, is less talking to someone and more developing a relationship with someone. So keep that in mind. If, you, if you're new to prayer or even if you've been praying for a long time, uh, you know, as Christ, even as Christ followers, Christians, we can get into to seasons and places and ruts in life where we're just, you know, we're just talking to, we're talking to, we're going through the motions. But really, it's the development of a relationship with. So when we, when we go back to prayer, remember that we're developing, we're constantly developing a relationship because we'll never reach the end until we get to heaven. Uh, the next thing is why. Let's talk about why we pray. Uh, there, I'm just going to list off three simple reasons of why someone or why a Christian would pray. You don't have to be a Christian to pray. Uh, anybody can pray to God, actually. God answers prayers of people before they even recognize Jesus as Savior. And so if you wouldn't consider yourself a Christian, that doesn't mean that you can't pray to the Creator, can't pray to God in heaven. He still, he still hears prayers. Um, so why, why would someone pray? One reason might be that you want to tell God, the Creator, your Father, something. But you want to tell Him that you love Him, tell Him how much you love Him and why. Maybe you want to thank Him for something, something happened, and so you want to give Him thanks. Uh, whether that something is good or, or something that's bad, uh, one of the things Scripture says that in all circumstances, uh, give thanks to God. And so even in negative circumstances, we can come and say, I want to develop, I want to continue to develop a healthy relationship with, with my Creator. And so even though I'm going through something that's kind of hard right now, I'm going to look around and I'm going to thank my God uh, that, that I have life. I'm going to thank my God that I have the ability, He's given me the ability and the strength to keep working through this. Um, Maybe you need to say sorry for an action or an attitude. Uh, you know, you were something happened, and later in the day you're feeling reg you feel regret. 
uh, you feel remorse over something that you said, something that you did. Maybe you didn't say or do anything, but you had an attitude in you towards someone else, and maybe they didn't, they didn't notice that, but you know that it was there, and so you're feeling re regret or remorse. Uh, and so you would pray because you want to tell the Lord that you're sorry for that. Um, or maybe you want to bring up a concern and ask for help. You've got something kind of bigger than yourself uh, going on, and, and you, you've been looking for the answer. You've been trying to do things, but it's just not working out. And so, you know, you want to pray because, God, I need, I need help. Father God, I need help with this. You, you're the creator. You're the, you're the maker of the world. You made me. You know me. And so how I need your help in this situation. What do I do or how do I accomplish this? Um, I wanted to go back and say, uh, we need to say sorry for an action or attitude. A lot of the times, um, because I know that God is my creator and I know that he's my father, he's the, he's the, the loving father that never does anything wrong. Um, when I do something wrong and I need to apologize to someone, uh, sometimes I'm not sure how they're going to receive my apology. Maybe they won't receive my apology or maybe uh, they'll you know, find something else that was wrong with me. Or there, there can be nervousness around apologizing or repenting. And so I think sometimes uh, a lot of us are leery of being repentant and actually going to someone and seeking forgiveness because we're not sure if we're going to receive that. But the cool thing about God is that if we are truly repentant, you know, we have an attitude that we feel regret or remorse over, and we're bringing that to Him, recognizing that it was wrong. He's so quick to forgive. He sent His Son Jesus already as a sign that I'm, I'm quick to forgive you. I've already forgiven you if you just come and you seek me and you ask me for that. And so I find that when I need to repent um, to someone for something, a lot of times, you know, I start with going to God first and saying, you know, God, I, I really messed up. I, I know I need to go back to this person, and so, you know, will you forgive me? And so I experience the forgiveness of the Father, which then I, now I, I know that I'm right with Him, and I still need to make it right with this person. But there's a little bit more grace and peace because whether or not they receive my apology, uh, whether or not they actually extend forgiveness, uh, in my heart, I've, I've been made right with God. And so I can work out the details of that because there's emotion attached to someone not receiving that. There's still pain. There's emotion. Uh, but I, I, don't need, I don't need it from them. It's, it's from my Creator that I need forgiveness. And then I need to do my part in saying that I was wrong. Um, so I just want to throw that out there for you. And then um, how? How does one pray or how do you pray? So there's a couple of things here we can talk about the position that one could be in. So you can, you know, you can be walking around and praying. You can be sitting down and praying. You can pray um, out loud. You can pray, you know, in, in your head as you're thinking. Your, your thoughts are directed toward God or out loud. They're directed to God. Uh, so position. Let's talk a little bit about position of prayer. Uh, you know, because... You don't have to be kneeling in the center of the floor to pray. You don't have to be bowing down. You don't have to be laying down. Uh, you can be walking. You can be at your place of work. I used to do this all the time. I, I would be at my place of work and something was kind of rattling around in my brain. And so I would mutter under my breath, you know, Father, I need help with this. Or Father, I'm about to have this conversation and I feel uncomfortable. So it was kind of muttering under my breath. I was inviting the Lord, developing a relationship with Him uh, to be present in that situation. But on the, on the other side of that, so you can really pray. The position of prayer depends on what it is that you need and, and the attitude that you are bringing forth. Um, I will say that if you choose to kneel or if you choose to bow, specifically in, in a point of prayer, um, what that will do is it will bring your body up to speed with, with what your spirit or your, your soul is longing for. Uh, you know, so we have our physical body. So when we kneel or when we bow, uh, it does something in, in us, in, in, our, in our mental capacity. It brings us to the place of, it's a position of prayer. I am humbling myself and I, and I know and I'm recognizing that I'm asking for help and I'm submitting myself uh, to God. And then so that's position. What to say? You know, so how do you start a prayer? Father God, hey God, Jesus, what do you say? Do you say Father God? Do you say Jesus? Holy Spirit, who do you pray to? Uh, we see that Jesus models praying to, to his heavenly Father. Uh, and he says that he, uh, no longer will you ask me for things, but you will go to my Father in my name. Uh, and so we can, we can pray, you know, to God. 
I tend to call him Father God because I love that imagery that, that he is my father. I can, I can go to him all the time. That's the relationship I want to develop. I want to develop the relationship with God as my father. But I also understand that he can be Almighty God. When you need the Almighty God to come through, you position yourself. Uh, so how, how you open your prayer, could, what part of the relationship are you seeking to develop? Do you need to develop? Um, and then um, out loud, again, you can pray out loud. You can pray in your mind. Um, I know so many people struggle with, with praying out loud because you are talking to a supernatural being that you cannot see. And so it seems, <laughs> you know, you're just, you're in your house and so you're talking to your ceiling or you're talking to the wall because, you know, you got to put your eyes, you have to put your eyes somewhere, but who are you talking to? Uh, and so praying out loud can, it, it can feel like it's such a steep learning curve. And so if you feel like you're there, that's normal. And again, it's developing that relationship. Yeah, I look like I'm, I'm talking at a wall, but I know what's actually happening is that there's a creator in, in heaven, my father in heaven, he hears me. Uh, and so it's a supernatural activity. Um, and then when, when should you pray? Again, you can pray anytime. You can set aside specifically, you know, with prayer and fasting, uh, setting aside intentional time to, to pray for specific things. But you can pray anytime because you can shoot up, you know, Father God, thank you so much for, for this. Uh, I Sometimes I hear people, I'll be driving with somebody and they'll say, thank you, Jesus, because they got the parking spot up close. And it seems silly, but if everything in their life they're giving credit to the Father for, I mean, that's great. That's awesome. It's it's a it's a place of everything I have and everything I do. God is, God is in everything that's happening in my life. And so the attitude of just praying all the time, thanking all the time. Um, where should you pray? You can pray anywhere. Uh, if you're really seeking God, you, you want something ha to happen in your life. You're looking for God to show up. Um, then perhaps setting aside a specific time and then getting in a specific place. Uh, I've said this before, but one of my favorite places uh, to pray used to be my car because it was quiet. Nobody was there. Uh, I could look around. I like being outside. So it was like in the car. There's nature that I can see, but I'm also protected from the elements. Uh, but it was, it, was, it was a place where I knew I could meet with God. Um, and then how do you end a prayer? A lot of times you'll hear Christians say, amen, in the name of Jesus, amen. And so how, how do you end the prayer? Amen simply means let it be done. Let this be done. Uh, and then a lot of times Christians pray in the name of Jesus. And again, because Jesus said, no longer will you ask me for things, but you'll go to my Father in my name and ask me. And so when we say in Jesus' name, it's a reminder to us that Jesus paid the price for us. And because Jesus paid the price, me, a, a sinner, me, just a, you know, a lowly human being, uh, to the Creator God, because of the price Jesus paid, I can come and I can develop a relationship with you. I can be in relationship with you, the Creator, with you, the Father, and I can ask Almighty God for things in the name of Jesus. And so I'm being reminded that it's in the name of Jesus. And then I'm also, again, covering that with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it, it, it represents the blood that Jesus shed. And so there's a covenant here. And so it's being reminded of the power connection because of what Jesus did. Uh, and so a lot of the times we say, in the name of Jesus, let this be done. Um, and then I want to talk about what will happen. What will happen when you pray as a result of your prayers? Uh, a couple of things. Number one is you'll be reminded that you're not God. Because <laughs> a lot of times we operate, we have such capacity. You know, we're, we're great at doing things, thinking things, problem solving. God has given us so much capacity. He's given human mankind uh, capacity to do many things. But when we stop and we supernaturally intend to develop a relationship with God, we remember that we are not God. We have a lot of power. We have a lot of capacity, but we aren't the creator. We are not almighty God. We are not the most loving father. There is somebody else. Uh, and then number two is we remember that we're not the center of the universe. Uh, something happens when we, when we begin to develop a relationship and when we come to the father in prayer, uh, he reminds us of our relationships and, and the people around us. And so we remember that we're not the center of the universe. We're, we're one person 
in, in a universe of people. And so it, it brings us to the truth of who we are and our place in the world. And then another thing it, it does is it helps us to release control. I think we're all control freaks. It, to, to some degree, to some extent, we want to control how we drive, how we live, how the kitchen is organized, how people interact with each other or with us. Uh, and so when we pray, we're, we're releasing control and saying, I, okay, I recognize that I don't actually have control over these things. My life goes a certain way and I'm submitted in a certain way, but I don't have control. And I know that you can come into this. And so it's, it's releasing that control. It's space to breathe because we don't have to hold on so tight to everything. And then um, another thing will happen um, is your feelings will be transformed. How you feel about certain things uh, will begin to be transformed when you invite God and you develop that relationship. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can develop your prayer life. So if you've been praying, working on praying, you're still, and again, there's no, it's not to be a perfect prayer. Uh, again, I don't think, you know, I've said this in, in a message a couple weeks ago, but there's, there's no such thing as an expert Christian. And so I don't think there's a such thing as an expert person at prayer, an expert Christian at prayer. We're all developing a relationship with God. And so at certain times, He'll call us in, into different points. And so it's not that you're an expert at prayer, but it is having confidence that I know there's a Father in heaven who hears my prayers. He hears my trying. He sees my intent. Uh, I am seeking Him. And so there's confidence that I may not be getting it right, and I, but, but you are. If you're seeking God, you're getting it right. And, and I may not know everything. I may not have the capacity or the understanding to, to fully teach this to someone else. Um, but you're developing it. And so I would say to, to um, keep a prayer journal. Now, I know not everybody's a writer. I get it. Sometimes I write. Sometimes I don't. Um, but when you begin to write out your prayers, what it does is it forces you to really think intentionally. <laughs> no one's going to do more writing than they have to. Uh, and so when, we're, when we pray out loud or we pray in our mind, sometimes we can ramble. You know, we just go on and on and on and we get distracted. But if you're writing things down, you're not going to write more than you have to. And you really have to focus to write something down. And so it'll help you think through what it is that you're needing, what it is that you're asking, what it is that you're saying, what it is that you're thankful for. And so if you're, you're looking to develop develop your prayer life, I would say try writing out your prayers. And they don't have to be long at all. They can be very simple, but it just helps focus your mind. It helps focus. And then the other cool thing is that you can go back and look and you can see, wow, God answered that prayer. God answered that prayer. God answered that prayer. I didn't even know what I was asking for. What I wrote was wrong, but what God did was what I meant. Uh, and so you can see that God, God really moves. Um, and so those are just a couple points on prayer. I really hope that, that you were able to, to find this somewhat helpful with what is prayer, why do we pray, how do you pray, uh, what will happen, and then again, how to develop uh, your prayer life. And again, just the, the biggest takeaway is that there's, there's no experts. There, there are no experts, even when you look at, I mean, Jesus obviously, Jesus obviously is an expert because he's Jesus and he taught us how to pray. And you can go find that. You can just Google, you know, Jesus teach us how to pray and it'll take you to the scripture. And you can see that he started with, you know, because he relinquished all of his power. And so he prays to God uh, and then he, he focuses on the kingdom. And so you can just follow that outline. What I want to do is I want to leave you with a prayer from Paul, Paul wrote a letter to the church in Ephesus and he and he writes a prayer to them and it's out of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 through 19 and he says this is Paul to the church he says I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. And what's really cool about this is that Paul wrote this 2,000-ish years ago, but his prayer continues today. We can read that and we can pray the same thing. And when people pray, it doesn't fall on deaf ears. Jesus was, uh, it was prophesied that Jesus would come thousands of years, you know, at least a thousand or two thousand years before Jesus actually came. And none of those words fell on deaf ears. They came to pass. And so the prayers that you pray, um, they keep on going. They keep on living. God continues to answer them. 
And so it may be not today, maybe not tomorrow, but God hears and He is answering the prayers that you are praying. He is seeing your heart as you draw near to Him, as you seek Him, He immediately draws near to you. And so be blessed today and, and I hope that you found this helpful and that you're more encouraged in your prayer life. If you haven't started the prayer and fasting, you're more than welcome to join us in that. If you're not ready to fast, just join us in intentional prayer time. Uh, you can find that information on our website at lifelinelodi.com. If you found this helpful, go ahead and, and like, share, comment, and you can even subscribe to, to follow for more information and, and videos and updates. All right, we love you. I love you. Bless you. Bye.